Hello there! In this video I will show you how to draw faster gemstones. There are so many ways to classify gems and one of them is by shape and cutting style. We can talk about faster versus cabochon style gemstones. Both of these are so beautiful but the faster gems tend to be more shiny because of the multiple facets that reflect light. In this video we will be drawing round, pear and oval faster gemstones. This is part 1 and part 2 will be about painting these gems, so stay tuned for that. But first let's understand the anatomy of a faster brilliant round diamond for example. So a diamond is constructed of three main parts. The first one is a crown, the second one is a pavilion, and in between these two there is a girdle. A crown contains a table in the center and it's surrounded by star facets, bezel facets and upper girdle facets. The pavilion contains lower girdle and pavilion facets. And last but not least, a collet. All brilliant round diamonds have around 57 facets if they have a perfect cut, which is a huge number for a tiny stone, but that's what gives this gem its shine and fire. There is so much to say about diamonds and gemstones, but let's leave this for another video and let's start sketching. So to draw this diamond, we will mainly draw the top view of the gem. And to do so, we need to draw three circles. The first circle we are going to trace represents the diameter or the cutout of the gem. The second circle is the table of the, the gem. This table can take up to 55 to 60% of our gemstone. And in between, we will trace the circle that will help us uh, sketch the other facets, mainly star facets and bezel facets. Now in order to draw the facets, we will use the circles. So we need to understand that diamonds have actually a specific number of facets. They have exactly 8 star facets, 8 bezel facets and 16 upper girdle facets. So in order to draw this, we need to divide the first circle to eight parts and then follow it by dividing the second circle to eight parts, but in the opposite direction. We will also divide the third circle to eight parts. So the game here or the idea here is to start by the one point from the first circle that goes towards two points from the second circle and then that ends up in the one point on the third circle. And this will give us exact shape of, of the bezel facets. Once we draw all the bezel facets, we will automatically see that the star facets are in shape. The only detail that we can add is the fact that the table is not actually circular. It has an octagon shape. So we will add those little facets at the end of the star facets. And we will also add, divide the upper girdle facets. And here we have our diamond or whatever round gemstone you want. So in order to draw the oval gemstones, we will need to follow the same steps as we saw earlier. And I guess it will be easier for you to trace these shapes using a drawing stencils templates because you will need different sizes of ovals. I got my, mine actually from a local shop here in my city and I guess you can probably find one easier in your place too. And if you already got one that's perfect, you can draw along with me.
For the pear shape, I don't have specific stencils to draw it, but I got a little technique that I use and I just draw half a circle and then I will try to link the ends of the half circle with the tip of the pear. But if you want to be perfectly symmetrical, you can draw one half and use transparent paper to transfer it or draw it or draw the other half. It will just help you draw two halves that are perfectly the same. The pear shape is actually different than the round or oval shape that we have sketched earlier and the main difference is in the size of the facets, especially the bezel facets. Those facets tend to be smaller at the bottom of the gem and as we get to the top of the pear the facets tend to be larger. We still have the same number of facets. We still have 8 stars, 8 bezel, bezel facets and 16 upper girdle facets. But the size changes following the, sh the pear shape of the gem. Now that our drawings are done, the last step before painting is to erase everything that isn't part of the shape of the gem. So we want our drawing to be clean and the lines to be clear. Because once we start painting, we won't be able to erase pencil traces and it will show under the painting layers. The next video will be about the painting process of these gems, so stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, your support will be appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.